Josh Johnson, do you think we can land both Jeremiah Smith and JoJo Trader? I think they can land Trader. I think Smith's going to take uh, some work. Um, but I think with Trader, I think that's more – I mean, I wouldn't count out Ohio State with Trader either. But I think that's more of a Miami FSU battle. I think it's close. And, uh, you know, some people from the FSU side feel like they hold the slight edge. So that's kind of the feedback I get on that. And and JoJo switches back and forth from people I talk to that have intel in South Florida about who he likes the best and stuff like that. But <clears throat> I think Smith would take a little – that's going to take a little more. And you have a lot more heavy competition – you know, you're talking about Georgia's, the Florida's, the, you know, certainly Ohio State, uh, who does a great job of receivers. So I think Trader is more likely, but I think getting both of them, I think, you know, that's, that's for really impossible for me to say without him starting his official visits. But I would say, I do think they're, they, they have a shot with Bo, but I think uh, they have a real uh, legit shot with Trader. If I'm going on what I know today as of Wednesday, you know, May 31st. I mean, I have to go with what I know. Um, so right now I would lean towards Trader being, you know, likely, you know, as a possibility Ooh. where oh. I think Smith's going to take some, I have to see what, I got to see what, what happens from that official visit when he visit official visits FSU, you know, on that June 19th. But uh, I think Trader's definitely a, a realistic shot. If they got both Smith and Trader top, Two class in the nation? Yeah, that'd be a top. That's that's going to be a top three class if you do that. I mean, I, I feel confident of that, and and that would be a major recruiting shift to the way recruits view FSU if you get those guys because you're going against the big boys, and I think it would say a lot about where recruits feel Norvell's going. Even if you get one of them, I think it signifies that, but. Certainly, if you get both of those guys, that would be ridiculous. And that obviously is still, it's going to be really hard to do that. But, um, but yeah, it would definitely put them in the top three, top two. What are the chances that Luke Cromenhawk gets to five stars? Keep being the best. Go Knowles. Love you, Ray, by the way. Love you, Ray. Love you, Ray, I loved it. And uh, Ray got to see how I feel about Miami fans. So that was yeah. fun. Uh, but, um, yeah, I think there's a 50-50 shot on that, Ray. I mean, he's already moved up to, I think, the top 50 range. Um, certainly, I think this is a big uh, upcoming event for him with the Elite 11 thing coming up. He told me he's also going to be at the June 10th uh, Elite Camp. So, I think, but the the Elite 11, I think, is going to kind of the first first test in there. And, and certainly, you watch this kid. I mean, he has... He has that dick factor when he's playing quarterback. I mean, he can run, he can throw, and his I mean his arm talent is probably the best I've I've seen since probably Jameis. Um, as far as the way the the way he can make just about every throw that you would look for. Now I'm not comparing to Jameis, I'm just saying the arm talent is is so good of, of the amount of throws that he can make. This is probably one of my or is one of my favorites is uh when he gets hit and he still hits the guy in the corner of the end zone, but uh, I just think uh, I think his stock is rising big time. Um, even the guys that saw him, I think at the um, the on three uh, event they're doing this weekend, I think the Elite Series, they're like this guy's one of the most impressive looking off the hoof. When you look at him, you know his height, weight, his his body frame, and just and then when you pop in the film, it just it really explodes at you. So yeah, I think Ray, there's a there's a real shot that he could move up there. Now, obviously, you need a good season. He needs to continue to play good when he plays top competition and then you know, go from there. But when you're in the top 50, I think, and you keep rising, I would say there's certainly a legit chance that uh, you could see him as, as a five-star. I don't think – I think there's a it's, – it's certainly a possibility. Um, I would say 50-50 either way. But either way, I think it's going to be a – he's a top 50 guy that, um, certainly FSU was on when he was only a three star, you know, so FSU has a really good evaluation eye for talent and they got on him early and it's a good thing because they probably wouldn't have gotten if they didn't. Um, so I think uh, they did a great job of, of seeing him early and and certainly uh, five stars, not impossible uh, for it to happen. 
Yeah, story up on our screen here. Again, some folks might be listening to this in the podcast feed, but Charles Power, the director of scouting for On3, says that uh, Luke probably has the most physical upside along with DJ Lagway, the most physical upside of these top 100 blue chip quarterbacks. So you ain't wrong, him. Michael. You ain't wrong. I love him. About. I mean, I, and he's a great kid, and he's a great recruiter too. Like that's the thing I don't think he gets enough credit for is his ability to recruit other guys. Like where he's, it's one thing being a really good, great player, but how do guys react to you and connect with you? And I think with him, and I think that's one of the reasons why they were able to get Jeremiah Smith and these guys like Jojo Trader on campus. Like he's very likable. Like he's a very likable guy that kids want to be around that, that he just, um, there's a comfort feeling when you're around him, whether you're on a visit or you're just around seven on seven. He's a guy that that recruits like and want to be around. Ray, I'm sorry, man. I can't believe I, I didn't. I can't believe I missed it. At the corner pocket, man. Uh, Corey and I will repent somehow. Uh, <laughs> first 17 beers are on us uh, in Orlando, man. Hope we see you out there, man. Thank you, Ray. You're the man. <laughs> what do you gather the coaching staff views as the number one position of need for 2024? Or do they focus on individuals rather than position groups? I mean, I think they have some positions that they want to address. Like, you know, certainly there there's positions like linebacker. You want to address the depth there. And I think there's other positions where center, they really want two in this class. They feel like they really need centers from what I can gather. And then uh, you, you, you just want to, I think the other ones are just the, the best, the best of the positions. And then they, really it, it's kind of a mixture of both uh, get down where you want, you want the positions, you know, to get the talent and the depth that you're looking for, but also it has to be the guy. You know, it has to be the prospect. You know, you evaluate them individually. Um, sure, they have, you know, I think they want linebackers. I think uh, certainly uh, they've shown they want receivers because they know a lot of these guys are going to leave. And I think a lot of people are like, we don't need receivers. Like, yeah, but you're, it's a good chance you lose Johnny Wilson. Keon has a good year. He's gone. And you could have several guys leave. So you have to prepare for what could not be there. Um, so I think that's another position uh, they're heavily looking at. But um, I think I think for me, defensive line, um, certainly uh, the linebacker position are two places that I think FSU's focused uh, a lot of the attention on. Like, are we fine at safety? Like, I'm not panicking. I don't want to sound rude, but like, are we fine at safety? Like what's going on in the portal, Michael? Do you, do you think it's it's still open if you're you know if you're already in there or if you're a grad yeah. transfer you can enter. Uh, they're obviously monitoring things. How closely do you think they are monitoring the transfer portal? Well, I think they're monitoring it. I don't think there's any act, major activity yet. Um, obviously, they were going to host our Artavius Lane, who was a uh, from Georgia Southern, but was committed to North Carolina. He uh, that visit got called off. Uh, from what I heard. Lane was afraid he might lose his spot. He's committed to North Carolina. So uh, there was some concern about that, which tells you that FSU wasn't really pushing that hard if, if he was concerned by that. But I think really right now they're just looking for a guy that fits everything they're looking for. You know, just um, they want a for sure guy. You know, so if that guy's not there, they're fine walking away. I think they feel good about the players they have in their room. Um, I don't I don't think there's so much concern with that position uh, within FSU as it is, I guess, from me or maybe you of what they could use as far as having a productive, you know, NFL type of player that could come in there and you can insert. But um, I think they feel comfortable with their room, but um, and they're not going to just take anybody. So I think they're just still studying and they're, they're still looking but I don't think they're just going to jump on anybody. Mm. All right. There we go. We'll go to Weldon Taylor. Shout out Weldon Taylor. King of the car selfie. Strong. Strong. Do you think Charles Lester is still a strong FSU lean? I do, Weldon. I feel very good about that crew. And I know some people get worried because Georgia has the last fish visit. I'm not that concerned with that. And I'll tell you why. First, if FSU wants Charles on campus, even after that Georgia visit, they're going to find a way to get him there when, when once that visit wraps up. Um, but two, I just don't think um, 
I think they feel very good about what they've done positioning wise and, and stuff like that. I be, be honest. I, <laughs> this might sound silly. I worry. I, I'm more concerned about the Colorado aspect of, of Charles Lester than I am Georgia or the Alabama's because he's visited Georgia and Alabama's they they've tried whatever uh, we've seen what Dion can do with defensive backs. Steven Dion's played the position. So you never know how, if he can, if he can certainly make an impact. Now I feel very, don't get that confused. I feel very good about FSU's chances. Uh, uh, for those that don't know, Charles did transfer to Venice high school from Sarasota Rearview. Venice is one of the top teams in the States. So that's not like shocking uh, because of, of, you know, Kids want to play for the best of the best, and certainly Venice is, is that every year. But, um, yeah, I feel good about um, FSU and where they sit with with Charles. And and I wouldn't be surprised. Charles takes his official visit on the 16th. I wouldn't be surprised if you see Luke Cromahawk and um, Cam Davis there for that visit just to make him feel comfortable. I would not be surprised with that. They both really recruited him extremely hard. And and I think uh, things have looked and trending pretty pretty darn well for for Charles. I don't I, I I don't have any change as far as how I feel about Lester. Somebody asked earlier, I think Jaron, like who's the next to commit? If you had to have like a top three, would Lester be on that? He would be on there because I okay. think he's going to commit after he takes in the, his official visits and and stuff like that. But. Um, I think he would certainly be in that top three. Uh, I'm trying to think of others that are making the decisions. Uh, I mean, no, I, I'd they'll give, it all, they'll give it all away for free. Okay. Mike. Let's they'll not give it, it away. Well. I, I told people I'm going to put together a list of, of guys that I think could pop in June or in July. So I'll, I'll probably do that, you know, after either during the weekend or after, after that, um, after that weekend, I'll, I'll kind of go in detail about, these decisions that are coming up in July, but uh, definitely the, yeah, Lester and Zandamella will be in there. want to kind of break down a little bit, uh, you know, the official visit weekend coming up. want to let you know who's coming in. Here's some of the guys that are coming in and I'll, I'll cover them. Um, I'm not going to say I cover everything because I'm just going to tell you, you know, brief things on them because my preview will kind of uh, it's already up on the front page. People can read it. It's right on the front page of war chant. You can kind of get your feelings, but first off, you have running back Christian, excuse me, Christian Clark. He's coming in uh, for official visit. Um, he, he's a guy that visited in the spring. I mentioned several times his uncle was Kenny Felder, who played baseball at FSU. His mom is also an alum of FSU, but they currently trail Texas. I think Texas is, if I was picking a team today, it would be Texas. So certainly uh, they have some work to do there. Um, I mentioned a four-star linebacker, Ed, Edmund Spillman. Uh, that's a guy that's coming in this weekend. Edmund Spillman, uh, he's a guy they visit they visit in the spring. They like a lot. He's their top target at the linebacker position. FSU gets first crack at him. I've talked about this several times too, setting the bar of these official visits. And certainly there's a major opportunity for FSU to really make a big push as far as where they sit with Spillman. I per- personally currently would give the Vols the edge, but uh, I think uh, that could change certainly throughout the weekend. <clears throat> um, next, four-star DB and probably uh, one of the top cornerbacks on their board is Wardell Mack. You know, um, he was a heavy, heavy LSU lean, I would say, before this process started. Then FSU got him on the spring visit. Florida also got him in. Florida State made a major, major push. I think our Sam Spiegelman did a, a piece on uh, FSU, just uh, you know how impressed he was, and he's certainly coming back for an official visit this weekend. So I think this is a big deal. He really likes Patrick Sertain. Obviously, Patrick's from New Orleans. That's where he was born. And then, and then you certainly have David Johnson, who's also from Louisiana. And then you have all these Louisiana players on FSU's team. So that's certainly should be a positive as far as uh, making this a very comfortable and exciting official visit weekend. I think FSU is very much in the picture there. So that's certainly a guy to watch. And then you have a couple more DBs that are coming in. Jaquavius Marshall is is one that's coming in. Um, 
this weekend. He he's been, been a guy that they offered later in the spring. FSU's been heavily in the picture. FSU leads the RPM. I think if they push, I'd like their chances to pull that one off. I'd like him more as a safety. I think that's where FSU's recruiting him. Six four guy. Don't have too many six four safeties. So I think that visit of how much a priority is is kind of what I'm going to be looking for on this weekend. And then uh, probably one of the last uh, uh, vis- official visitors that were set up was Red Morgan. He's from Phoenix City, Alabama. Um, he's a guy they offered, I would say, I want to say in May, or not May, but uh, on an official visit this spring. They later set up an official uh, visit um, after that official offer was made, and and he's coming as well this weekend. That's another safety that's coming in. So it's obviously they're attacking this safety position and I'm um, trying to draw, make sure I don't draw a blank. I'm missing one more as long. Nair Daniels. Yeah, that's it. Nair Daniels, offensive lineman, the lone offensive lineman in this class. Penn State. I hear Penn State FSU battle lately. I think Texas is also in the picture, but I think more so with FSU. Another guy that really connects with, with Atkins very well, interior guy. They do want interior guys. That's a big uh, you know thing they want in this class. Um, tackles probably the the third best because uh centers is probably the number one thing that they want but daniels visited a couple times in the spring now he's coming in for an official visit i think fsu is a major factor i think they're right there with with penn state but they certainly need to make a a massive impression this weekend so six official visitors could be some unofficial visitors we'll see i i'm waiting on some calls i'm finishing that but i want to kind of get to these official visitors so we don't miss them um, by the end of the show, but um, with that said, just uh, resume with the questions. Yeah, I don't think you need a, a subscription for this. It's over at uh, it's part of the On3 network, mm-hmm. man, just how great they got everything covered. Uh, when you go to the recruiting tab, you can find uh, right. visits, and then, I mean, they're you know, boom, they're all clustered up here by date. So, as you see, there's a whole bunch in June, and as Michael talked about earlier uh, in this hour, there's that dead period uh, for most of July. So, uh, here are your guys love, this week. Yeah, and if you click on the little arrow on each weekend, um, Aslan can just click on one of them um, for for the official visits. Uh, it is a, a great graphic. I love the graphics of tells you, one, if it's an official visit or if it's unofficial. It's really put out and where you can see it good. So uh, I love the graphics that on threes added with these official visits. They look great. But, yeah, you can follow all that. And all that stuff is linked on the PRB. I got it all on there, guys. So uh, whatever one you want to know about as far as who's visiting when, uh, we've got them all updated. 